Okay, so Pi News episode 50, and we had a lot of good things happen in the last couple of weeks since Pi News 49, so let's just have a recap. So the first bit of really good news was that Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit came out of beta and the performance was great on it and I've had a lot of really good comments, people are really enjoying using it. So uh, it'll be great to see more and more support for that in the future. Uh, we had a fix for uh, Widevine on the 64-bit OS, uh, which is a very simple fix to be able to let you run Netflix and Amazon Prime. We had a new version of Raspberry Pi Imager, version 1.71, I've got a separate video on that. Uh, and also uh, we had a new bootloader which will enable eventually you to be able to buy a brand new Raspberry Pi 4 uh, or 400 or whatever newer models come in the future I imagine uh, and they will be able to just be able to connect to an internet connection and you don't need another computer to set them up so a really big update on that they're asking people to uh, beta test that so play around with it let them know various things about it I know a lot of the requests have been to have Wi-Fi on that I don't know how uh, or if that's possible, but it's certainly worth noting. And in last Pi News, we had RPI Locator, which was basically a way of uh, checking stock on Raspberry Pis. The stock situation doesn't seem to have got any better. You can buy a Compute Module 4 2 gig of RAM without Wi-Fi uh, for 3850 from China, but everybody else seems to be properly out of stock. If you're in the UK, there's definitely a story later on that may benefit you in getting stock of a Raspberry Pi. So next up, Pharonix did a big test, a big speed test, comparing the 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS to the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So using a Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard, computer with 4 gig of RAM, I ran some fresh benchmarks of the Raspberry Pi OS in its default 32-bit build, and then again with the new 64-bit build. I did this quite some time ago, uh, not the extensive tests that are listed here, but just did some general tests, and I did find that the 64-bit definitely worked better for me. And they also mentioned the Raspberry Pi 3 and Pi 0 2W, because they're also 64-bit capable machines. And pretty much on every test, the 64-bit came out the best. So you can see here, in code time, seconds fewer is better. So the 64-bit was faster, 64-bit was faster, You've got to be careful because sometimes it says in this case nodes per second more is better 64-bit has more nodes so that's better iterations per minute more is better 64 bits better uh, i'll put a link in the description to all of these because there are loads of tests and if you want to go through it uh, all the different information that's there they really have done loads and loads of testing if running on newer raspberry pi hardware that is arch 64 capable i definitely recommend switching out for the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS if you've not already done so. Might be different if you're using lower RAM, although we have uh, got ZRAM and ZSwap to be able to hopefully help with that. I do need to do some tests. So at the end of all these benchmarks, across the few dozen different workload tests, switching Raspberry Pi OS 11 for the 64-bit version improved the performance on average by about 48%. See all the 32-bit versus 64-bit Raspberry Pi benchmarks. And there's a link on here as well. Next up was uh, from Facebook Raspberry Pi and DIY projects. Uh, so this photo shows an old computer, Elliott Electronic Computer. Look at the size of the computer being unloaded here and you can see a Raspberry Pi Zero. I don't know if that's a 2W or just a Raspberry Pi Zero, but uh, in front of that same building, just showing the size comparisons. Another Facebook and another amazing case by Michael Clements. He, he does loads of these different builds on Raspberry Pi and uh, if we have a look at the pictures so it, it just looks really nice uh, and the calling is very very special on it so we just skip through there is a youtube video i'll just kind of flick through it but i won't show it i'll put a link in the description to that but it's actually water cooled and has an nvme ssd drive <laughs> and it's actually a, a compute module 4 in there with a board and uh, if you go through the video i wonder if i can just sort of pause it at various different bits so here's the board that's inside it. And if we scroll through a bit, a bit about the manufacture of it as well. Looking rather cool with the cooling bit with the Raspberry Pi logo. And a little glimpse inside of it as well. And also all the tubing looking really nice. And if we go back, someone had made a comment, I can't remember if it was on Facebook or on the YouTube comments, um, that the NVMe drive looks like a graphics card or obviously where it's orientated off the uh, what would be the motherboard and a PC. Yeah, it does look really nice. Very, very impressive. 
And this one from the RetroPie official on Facebook, a few arcade builds using RetroPie, mainly use 32 inch monitors, but have recently built late 90s style arcades with 43 inch screens. And if we scroll in, I guess, I guess probably that is the 43, is it? But it's actually got four sets of controls, look, one, two, three, four. I used to remember playing, um, was it Super Off-Road in an arcade in Exeter with my mates when we all used to work in a, in a very similar space. We used to meet up for lunch and we used to go to the arcades and play games in our break. I wish I had room for one of these. And if you've got loads of room, then you can get multiple retro power machines. Very, very nice. Next up from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Project turns any Pi into FM transmitter. If you've ever wanted to host your own radio show, now's your chance. Marsan, also known as Pi Support over at YouTube, has created a project that can turn a Raspberry Pi into an FM transmitter. Before we dig into this project, we should point out that it may be illegal to transmit on specific frequencies. I used to have, uh, oh, I've still got it somewhere upstairs, a little FM transmitter that I used to plug into my phone that would transmit to my car radio. So it looks like you can do something like this with the Pi. You can also use it for MP3s and you can also plug a microphone into it as well. The only additional hardware you'll need for this project is a 20 to 40 centimeter wire attached to a GPIO pin to function as an antenna. Yeah, nice project and there's a GitHub link on there as well. I like this one. Back in the summer of 2021, we received an unusual request to supply 200 Raspberry Pi 400 kits to one of the biggest universities in Hungary. Imagine if they wanted to turn them around, they could definitely make a profit on those 200 Raspberry Pi 400s. That's a lot of exams. We weren't sure what they were up to at university ELTE, but since the official launch of their new exam center in November, we can see that the base computer infrastructure is made up entirely of Raspberry Pi 400 units. Students taking 10,000 exams a week. Here they are all sat down using them. And it looks like they've got some additional buttons. You can see all these green buttons are here. Whether that's just pies in a different country or that's something they do themselves. Another cool project uh, from Hackaday, projector and Raspberry Pi in a box. One of the worst consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic were the closing of schools. India is one of the rare countries where schools have been closed for over two years. While students have the option to attend online classes, the availability of technology is only 8 to 10%. Hence, I decided to make the most simple computer I could imagine. And there's a gallery on here, so let's just flick through. So you can see it's a, it's a case, it's a projector, it's got a little pie symbol there, uh, proper mouse and a full-size keyboard. And I don't know what that is, is that a microphone? Oh, it looks like it's a webcam, isn't it? There it is all, all packaged up and <laughs> transported around on the back of a motorbike. And there's a video here as well. Again, I can't really show it, so what I'll do is just sort of flick through and get some images from it, a lot of text. Here he is transporting it around, bit of unpacking. Let's see it with an image on the screen. There you go. I ah, see that white box is the projector and that's the menu system for the projector you can see there. And there it is running Raspberry Pi OS. Yep, very cool. And I alluded to this story earlier on. So if you're in the UK, there will be some Pi pop-up shops in Gateshead, Edinburgh and London. And if we scroll down through, following the success of its pop-up shop in London's prestigious Oxford Street last fall, Raspberry Pi has announced there will be three further pop-ups during summer 2022. So this year's pop-ups will be in the Metro Centre Gateshead on Saturday the 28th and Sunday the 29th of May, St James Quarter Edinburgh on Friday the 29th and Saturday the 30th of July, and London's Oxford Street on Friday the 29th and Saturday the 30th of October. So you've got a bit of a wait, but uh, you're almost guaranteed to get hold of a pie. So this was from the official Raspberry Pi site. Uh, so this is a Raspberry Pi in a wooden suitcase and it, it just looks really nicely made. Maker Derek wanted to build a full-size arcade but his wife wasn't having it due to having nowhere to put it. I mean, who has space for a fridge-sized piece of kit in their house? So it's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus running emulation station and the woodworking on it looks really impressive. I like the Raspberry there and this uh, little cable tidy. Shame there's no video. And next up is something called RetroPie Extra. Now I got contacted by the current maintainer of this project. Uh, it used to be run by Zero J, but there's a reason he gave it up on his GitHub. Uh, and now the new one is uh, this one here. So XR Caniv. Uh, and you can see, if you scroll down through, basically what happens, I think the old one, there might be some things that the old one has uh, that the new one doesn't. Um, so you might want to have a look at both of them, but basically it's a way of installing various different ports, different emulators and things like that that aren't necessarily there on the Pi straight off. Uh, and if we have a look at the other one here, this is the newer one. 
and I'll boot into RetroPie in a minute just to show you how it works. But basically there's a long list of things you can add to RetroPie uh, and I'll show you how it works. So let's quit out of this. So I've done a clean install of Retropi. This is just the latest Retropi. I used the Raspberry Pi imager for it. So let's have a look at it. So the way you need to do the setup is to quit out Retropi. Uh, so I'll hit start and go down to quit and quit emulation station and yes. And so for the installation, we need to run these commands. So CD space tilde and I've already done this. So it's going to look a bit different. So git clone. So it says it already exists for me. Then CD Retropie Extra, and you can see here install extras.sh. So I won't do it as I say because I've already done it. Let's boot back in to Emulation Station. And I haven't had any ROMs or anything to this. Um, so you go into Retropie, go down to Retropie Setup, go down to Manage Packages, and Manage Experimental Packages. And I use the keyboard for this because it's much quicker to go down through the list. Uh, so loads of these things are here already. In fact, everything is here already in Retropie standard. But when we get a bit further down, you'll see that it says extra. There you go, Retropie extra. So there's some extra emulators here uh, and some more Libretro cores, which can all be installed. Things like OpenLara there, which I've installed, but I haven't got around to getting it working yet. I think I need to install um, some extra things from the OpenLara website. And usually you can find individual GitHubs for all of these bits if you have a look through. All this good help on the Retropy forums. So things like Chromium as well uh, and also Firefox can be installed via this method. Although I haven't got them to work from Retropy. I ended up installing the desktop uh, and having a look through that. But I, I probably did it in the wrong order. I haven't really had a good look at it. But if you want to have a look at some of these extra things you can install. Uh, things like uh, Mario 64. Uh, there's various different, uh, so Rejuke Newcomb is in there as well, all sorts of really interesting things. I did ask about Wine, uh, so the ability to play Windows games, and uh, he's working on that, so that'll be interesting to see. And if I go back in, just pick up my controller and perform reboot. So I'm using a different skin, which is normally available through RetroPie anyway. Uh, so let's go into ports. And uh, just try this crispy free doom phase one. Now I didn't have to install anything extra with this. This just installed from RetroPie Extra and it's all up and running, all configured. Okay, so it looks really quite decent for doom uh, considering how old this is. And I plugged in a mouse because uh, it needs it for this sort of game. So what's it space to open this up? These things are horrendous. Use health, yeah. You can see it's a completely different environment, uh, and even things like trees and stuff. Look at that, it's a proper like Minecraft style environment. Do they do they explode? They do. <laughs> Looks like I can't go anywhere in there. Is there something shooting at me? This thing. Oh. So yeah, very nice. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the uh, I'll keep an eye on RetroPie Extra and all the extra things that are added, but uh, yeah, that's really impressive. Just got to find my way out of here now. Must be this one. Oh. Oh, oh, what's the snake thing? It's really responsive and really nice to play. Did it get me then? I could do with a shotgun. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.